Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is a uh, process for the images, and uh, uh, we'll be extremely happy to coordinate what looks to be a very fruitful and very interesting discussion for the next one and a half to two hours. Stay tuned. Today is International Education Day, and uh, I think uh, we have been uh, uh, witnessing uh, a period of uh, the new start of the upgrade and extroversion of the Greek universities, and a very serious effort to turn Greece into an international education center and attract students from all over the world. And uh, today's focus will be on the US as uh, we are starting our study in Greece uh, virtual fair and having bridges between Greek and USA universities. And uh, I would like uh, to thank uh, a lot of the General Secretary for Higher Education, the Ministry of Education and Religious Affairs, and of course the General Secretary for Greeks Abroad and Public Diplomacy in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And without any more delay, I will pass the virtual floor to Ms. Nikki Karamelis, the uh, Minister of Education and Religious Affairs in Greece. Thank you very much, Mr. Papakimitro, Your Excellencies, Mr. Payet, Ms. Vadopoulou, dear General Secretaries, Mr. Dimitropoulos, Mr. Chrysoulakis, dear Dr. Goodman, dear Alan, dear Rectors and Professors, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure and honor to be here with you today to mark what I think is the great progress that has been achieved in establishing collaborations between Greek and US universities and to underscore our unending support for more partnerships, more collaborations. What better way to celebrate UNESCO's International Day of Education in, um, than through this amazing work? As I said earlier to those participating, today is a particular day for Greece and Athens in particular. We are witnessing one of the uh, worst winter storms in the last decade. And the fact that nobody from the Greek side is missing, I think testifies to the great commitment of Greece in this endeavor and in all projects and collaborations. I would uh, like to very warmly thank, first of all, uh, the US Embassy in Greece and Ambassador Payet personally. Um, this uh, venture started off two and a half years ago and uh, Ambassador Payet has been instrumental in the success of, uh, of this endeavor um, and in helping us uh, to open new channels of communication and we are extremely grateful for that effort. Um, Mr. Dimas, for the excellent collaboration we've had so far in the research area. Um, the Institute of International Education, Alan Goodman, uh, we first met uh, two and a half years ago in uh, New York and started the uh, uh, IEPP partnership uh, between uh, US and Greek universities. Um, study in Greece for its determination and hard work to make our vision a reality. And of course, Secretary General Apostolos Dimitropoulos um, and Mr. Chrysoulakis as well uh, for their determination uh, and their persistence in, in making this happen and making it known to the world as well. Um, each and everyone has played an instrumental role in, uh, uh, with its commitment to internationalization, as can be seen from the volume of uh, extremely high quality partnerships between Greek and US universities. And of course, I would like to thank most of all, all Greek and all US universities, which have embraced this vision so warmly and have moved with such conviction and creativity. I could not be happier for how this most strategic partnership has developed during these uh, past two and a half years, uh, difficult years. And we obviously remain um, enthusiastic about the prospects uh, and the projects that are to flourish in the next coming months and years. Um, ever since this government came into power, um, internationalization of higher education, as Mr. Pachimitos mentioned, has been among our top priorities and one of the main pillars of our efforts at the ministry. Um, and we have moved in several directions. The first one was to remove legislative hurdles and barriers, to reduce red tape, to give the necessary freedom to our universities, to form as many kinds of partnerships as possible, joint degrees, dual degrees, double degrees, summer programs, exchanges of researchers, students, professors. Second, we have committed significant amounts of funding to assist our universities in this effort of extroversion, this effort of internationalization. Um, and last, we have and will continue to do everything in our power to open up channels of communication. Um, and that's an area we have worked on very closely with Ambassador Pyatt, with Alan Goodman, uh, so as to open up opportunities. And of course, it, um, uh, it's up to the universities afterwards uh, to uh, you know, push those further, to dig in deeper and further um, regarding potential partnerships that can be formed. So without taking more time, just allow me to express again my, my thanks for all the incredible work done so far and for all the amazing projects uh, which I know uh, lie ahead. Uh, rest assured, the Greek government will continue to support in every way possible 
this effort of extroversion of internationalization of stronger ties between Greek universities and American universities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Karameos. Uh, we will now see a very uh, short video from uh, Mr. Christian Dimas, the Deputy uh, Minister for Development and Investment, uh, since he's in uh, Paris right now in France uh, on an official uh, visit uh, in his capacity as a Deputy Minister. Hello. Uh, first of all, allow me to congratulate the Ministry of Education and Religious Affairs and the General Secretariat for Higher Education for organizing today's event, Study in Greece Virtual Fair, Enhancing Bridges Between Greek and American Universities. Greece and the United States have strong ties in all sectors, in culture, in economy, in defense, and strengthening ties in education, research and innovation is a strategic priority for both countries. The partnership between Greek and American universities with a IAPP program is a characteristic example that leads the way. Uh, the Ministry of Development and Investments and uh, more specifically the General Secretariat for Research and Innovation uh, wanted to see how we could proceed uh, with a bilateral agreement with the uh, uh, United States, with the National Science Foundation, in order to promote research and innovation in the two countries. Uh, up until recently, we didn't have a bilateral agreement, a legal framework, which would actually enable more institutions to cooperate and have common projects. Uh, we actually uh, started discussions in the strategic dialogue between Greece and the United States in December 2019. Uh, we had a second uh, round of discussions in the United States in Washington DC uh, early in 2020 and uh, we agreed that it was uh, necessary to have uh, a framework that would actually enable uh, this cooperation between academic institutions in science and technology. Uh, I'm very proud that we signed this agreement uh, uh, one year ago. Uh, it has been ratified uh, by the Hellenic Parliament and now we are in the process discussing with the National Science Foundation in the United States to see how we can make it work. Uh, apart from that though, uh, the establishment of the Hellenic Institute of Advanced Studies uh, which aims to uh, build bridges between Greek academics in uh, American universities uh, with uh, Greece with academic institutions in countries or even companies uh, that are interested in research and innovation uh, has actually started working very well. Uh, we have uh, announced two very important agreements in artificial intelligence and in robotics and uh, we want to see how we can further these agreements in order to build more bridges between the two countries. So allow me to uh, welcome this initiative. I consider it extremely important. I'm sorry that I am unable to uh, be with you uh, in a live connection, but uh, uh, I am uh, currently flying to Paris for the ministerial meeting. Uh, again, thank you very much, uh, and I hope to have a fruitful discussion. Uh, we'll extend our thanks to Mr. Dimas for his uh, video message, and we pass the floor. Mr. Ioannis Krishulakis, uh, the Secretary General for Greeks Abroad and for Public uh, Diplomacy, of course, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mr. Krishulakis. Thank you very much. On our Minister of Education and Religious Affairs, Mrs. Niki Karameos. On our Deputy Minister for Research and Technology, Mr. Christos Dimas. On our Secretary General for Higher Education, Mr. Apostolos Dimitropoulos. Your Excellency, Mr. Jeffrey Payat, Ambassador of the United States, Greece. Your Excellency, Mrs. Alexandra Papadopoulou, Ambassador of Greece in the United States. Honorable Chief Executive Officer of the International Institute of Education, Dr. Alan Goodman, Mr. Papakimidjos, distinguished academics and participants. 
I'm very glad to be here with you today to discuss about international education in Greece and how to enhance synergies between Greek and US universities. International education in Greece has been developed significantly in recent years, and it has gained the interest of many Greek and international universities. In our globalized and interconnected world, interaction and exchanges is of great importance, both for the academic communities and countries. International education is contributing to the exchange of ideas and greater understanding between people and cultures. It is also a valuable instrument for enhancing a country's reputation and its position in the academic and global community. The Secretariat General for Greeks Abroad and Public Diplomacy of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in accordance with its mission, is responsible for enhancing Greece's image abroad. Public diplomacy has been established as the third pillar of foreign policy in Greece, and for this reason, we take action on the promotion of our country's soft power tools, such as culture, the Greek languages, the Greek language, and certainly international education. Our Secretariat General has been encouraging the networking of academics and researchers from the Greek diaspora in the United States but also in the rest of the world, especially in the health sciences domain. The aim is to contribute to the communication and exchange of knowledge and ideas among scientists for the benefit of the academic community, but also of Greece. We strongly, we strongly believe that in the brain gain possibilities without neglecting the brain circulation benefits. Our Secretariat General, in cooperation with the Ministry of Education and the Study Greece project, is also promoting foreign language education programs offered by Greek universities. We are in close cooperation with the Aristoteles University of Thessaloniki regarding their first medicine undergraduate program for English speaking students, and we are also cooperating with the University of Athens regarding their first undergraduate English language program in classics. Our aim is to attract international students as we strongly believe that nowadays, Greece offers great opportunities to study or even seek employment. Therefore, we firmly encourage international and Greek diaspora students to discover not only the fascinating history and culture of Greece, but also the talent, the passion, the creativity, and the hospitality of Greek people. Through our embassies, consulates, and public diplomacy offices abroad, but also through the dynamic Greek diaspora, our Secretariat General is trying to communicate globally the high standards of Greek universities. We are also trying to communicate to the international community that Greece offers remarkable opportunities to study, work, or invest in the country. Greece is on a steady reform path with an incredible potential in technology, design, modern art, business, innovation, and so on. Through our multiple projects and initiatives, we aim to showcase worldwide the dynamic character of Greece and the Greek people while promoting at the same time the values of the cultural heritage of Greece. Today's webinar is a great opportunity to illustrate the importance of international education to Greek-US relations and to explore possibilities for further synergies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Drusilakis, and uh, for both for the speech and for hosting us uh, here. And uh, we pass the floor now to Mr. Apostolos uh, Dimitropoulos, uh, Secretary General for Higher Education. Okay, thank you. Dear Minister of Education and Religious Affairs, dear Secretary General for Public Diplomacy and Greeks Abroad, dear Ambassador of the USA in Greece, dear Ambassador of Greece in the USA, Dear CEO of the Institute for International Education, dear professors, ladies and gentlemen, 
On the occasion of the celebration of the International Education Day, I would like to thank you, thank you warmly for being here with us today in our webinar. Along with the celebration of the International Education Day, the Ministry of Education is happy to celebrate the first mature results of Greek universities' internationalization efforts with American universities, some of which will be presented to you in detail later on. Our webinar uh, today has a twofold purpose. Firstly, to launch the upgraded tools of the study in Greece platform, presenting its new services and functions for the promotion of the extroversion of Greek universities. And secondly, to highlight the development and the results of the International Academic Partnership Program that we inaugurated in 2019 with the valuable support of the Institute of International Education to foster the establishment of synergies between American and Greek universities. In our capacity as a, a Ministry of Education, we support and strengthen synergies with universities in countries inside and outside the European area. Today, we have the opportunity to highlight mature cooperation programs between Greek and prominent American universities. It's worth pointing out that this initiative was the first we took to demonstrate that internationalization was a strategic priority of our government, strongly committed to opening up new avenues at the educational level. Our main goal is to facilitate universities of the two countries to engage with each other in order to launch synergies that may involve uh, the creation of joint and dual undergraduate and postgraduate programs, participation in summer schools, exchanges of students, academics and researchers, research collaboration, exchanges of good practices, as well as any other joint initiatives the universities themselves will choose to activate. Besides the initiative of, of the International Academic Partnership Program, allow me to mention that since last year, we have been facilitating our universities to uh, explore possibilities for cooperation also with the universities in Great Britain, with the contribution of the British Council, but also with the universities in China with the contribution of the China Education Association for International Exchange. We have also taken, already taken, targeted actions facilitating and reinforcing the establishment of foreign language undergraduate and postgraduate programs, as well as of joint and dual curricula between Greek and foreign universities. We have provided our universities, our universities with the necessary additional financial support to develop such programs and initiatives, along with the extra funding we allocated to those universities that successfully participate in the landmark initiative European universities uh, developed at the European, by the European Union at the European level. Our vision is to turn Greece into an international education hub in Southeastern Europe, attracting students, researchers, and research and innovation investments from other countries. Therefore, we are pursuing the strengthening and continuous improvement of Greek universities through a series of initiatives, projects, and actions undertaken over the past two years in the framework of the National Strategy for Higher Education that we are formulating and implementing through the financial tools being at our disposal. We reformed the public funding allocation system to universities, linking funding to their performance. It is very promising that 11 out of 24 universities have chosen to be assessed by their performance in the sub-target of internationalization. There are um, currently, they are currently in the process of developing their strategic action plans to achieve their selected goals. We are determined to invest more and strengthen our best academic units, our centers of excellence in research and ed education and innovation, so that they can occupy better positions on the academic world map and transform themselves to a mild power to modern, dynamic, and inclusive international centers that will contribute to our national reconstruction and to the transformation of the country as a whole. Greek universities are able to foster an impactful, impactful uh, collaboration beyond fields such as classics and archaeology. Greece has a lot of insight to offer in the sciences, economics, management, as well as in cutting edge technologies such as robotics, machine learning, big data management, or life sciences and climate change. By further expanding international cooperation activities of universities, Greece will have the opportunity to become a host country for scientists, a country for the dissemination of know-how, 
a country for opportunities and open horizons. The Greek diaspora, the large number of Greek scientists in the USA, in Europe, and many other countries across the globe have a crucial role to play. The visiting professorships is a new scheme through the European Union Recovery and Resilience Facility to further support uh, this trend. Conclusively, allow me also to mention that Catalyst for such successful uh, endeavors and pioneering collaborations are the individuals who initiate them. Greek universities, with the exceptional human resources, have played an important role in finding ways out of both the economic crisis and the pandemic, having shown remarkable adaptability and resilience to adverse conditions. Moreover, it shouldn't be ignored that the quality of Greek universities is also proved by the hundreds of Greek scientists who are distinguished abroad and are professionally recognized due to the strong background of knowledge they received from Greek universities. Uh, dear all, I thank you very much for your attention and I warmly wish you a safe, happy and most creative academic year. Thank you very much, Mr. Dimitrovoulos, and for hosting this um, as uh, well. Uh, you said that the uh, part of the universities themselves will choose to activate, and a bit later on, we'll pass on exactly that point to see how the universities are responding uh, to this initiative. Now, uh, we'll pass the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Jeffrey uh, Payet, and you, you may allow me to say that uh, this uh, deepening of cooperation between the Greek and US universities will be a part of Mr. Payet's uh, legacy in enhancing in general the US and Greek uh, relations. Mr. Ambassador. Great. Thank you, Costa, for the comment and, and also for the introduction. And let me just be very brief and say, first of all, I cannot think of a better way to mark International Education Day than to participate in this seminar with Minister Kerameas and so many of our colleagues from across Greek academia who have driven the fantastic progress we've seen in our university and academic partnerships over the past couple of years. This has been a very high priority um, in the overall bilateral US-Greece relationship. Um, that's reflected in the high place that these educational partnerships have in the US-Greece strategic dialogue that Secretary Blinken led on um, last October. I'm confident that is going to continue to be the case because this is one of the most lucrative areas of cooperation between our two countries in terms of the long-term return on investment. I'm really glad that we were able to hear from Minister Demas because I feel very strongly about the importance of the partnership in basic sciences. And I'm, I'm very proud of the S&T MOU that we signed um, a year and a half ago and the foundation that provides for doing even more. I'm delighted um, that we have the head of our Fulbright office on one of the panels this evening. And um, Artemis Initu is a national asset for both countries in terms of growing our academic partnerships. And, and I would encourage everybody to listen to what she has to say. Uh, I'm also really glad uh, that we have Alan Goodman here. Alan has been a fantastic partner with the International Institute for Education, IIE, from the beginning of this enterprise. Um, just before the pandemic hit, we were ready to pull the trigger on an IIE-led delegation that was coming to Greece to further develop these institutional partnerships. Uh, I'm sorry we haven't been able to do that yet, but I'm really glad that we've been able to accomplish so much in the virtual space. And it, there's literally not a month that goes by without me hearing about or participating in another announcement um, like the one that Minister Karameas had with Harvard last week, uh, the month before, I think it was Columbia, Georgetown, I could go on and on in terms of the top tier American institutions uh, that have begun to take advantage of the, the window that Minister Karameas and her, her team have opened up. And then finally, um, my very best wishes to my, my dear colleague, Ambassador Papadopoulou in, in Washington, DC. My Zoom background was taken in our front yard just a couple of minutes before we started. So you can see, Alexandra, um, we have a lot of snow in Athens. And as you know very well, Washington, D.C. and Athens take a similar approach to snow removal. So I'm expecting the snow to last a little bit until the, until the sun comes out. But um, I'm, I'm very, very optimistic about everything that we've accomplished. Um, I'm extraordinarily proud of the partnership with Minister Karameas. And, and 
the fantastic leadership that she has exercised in terms of charting a new direction for the extroversion of Greek education, um, and also creating opportunities for students in both countries, because I think that's what's most important about this. It's important for American young people to come to Greece to learn more about this country. Um, there's, I can't think of a better place for an American student to come and get some international experience. And likewise, uh, for Greek young people, whether they're in humanities or the sciences or some other field, we want to make sure that the doors are open uh, so that they can avail all the opportunities that the United States unmatched academic infrastructure provides to, to grow and move forward. So thank you to everybody. Congratulations. And I'm confident the best is yet to come. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Payet, Ambassador Payet. Uh, we'll now see, I'm very happy to see Alejandra Papapapoulou, the Greek ambassador in the US. She's been there, I think, in Washington for the past one and a half uh, uh, year. Uh, very experienced uh, diplomat, Ms. Papapapoulou. Thank you, Mr. Bachlimidzo. Thank you, Costa. And Jeff, I'm jealous of your backyard, but I'm not jealous of the snow. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from Southern Peloponnese, so snow is not part of our vocabulary. Here in Washington, it's very cold, but clear. Uh, Madam uh, Minister and distinguished uh, speakers, uh, uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate the organizers of today's event. Uh, and of course, above everything else, thank uh, the people of studying Greece. Uh, they're very committed. Uh, their de dedication to what they're doing is exemplary, and they're doing a terrific job, and I have personal experience of that. Uh, bringing American students to Greece will have definitely a positive and long-lasting impact in many ways, uh, but above all, so the impact will be in the deepening of the understanding between our two people and building on an already extremely strong relationship. Uh, as uh, Deputy Minister Dima said and Ambassador Payet said, uh, people to people ties is uh, one of the main pillars of the strategic dialogue between Greece and the United States. And education is an integral part of this key component to our bilateral relations. Our two countries are very like in this regard. They're viscerally connected through the thriving Greek American community whose footprint on the higher education in the USA is well known. In the spring of last year, when we started to see some opening in the pandemic that really impeded, the pandemic impeded our activities here in the United States and of course in Greece around the world, the embassy tried to help in this direction. And as I said before, our cooperation with studying Greece has been exemplary. But of course, a lot, a lot more needs to be done. Just to be a little more specific, um, uh, we had a virtual meeting with, uh, with the participation of Secretary General Dimitropoulos uh, and representatives of studying Greece. Uh, and in this uh, virtual meeting, we had the opportunity uh, to be briefed uh, about uh, what the studying Greece program is all about. And by saying we, it was the embassy and all the seven consulates in the United States. This initial step aimed at giving space to study in Greece to present its goals and tools of action, and also to, uh, to us here in the United States uh, to reflect on how we could bring American universities closer to Greece and how to bring American students to Greece. Uh, and our goal is to reach, of course, to the Greek American students, but also to non-Greek American students. Uh, then, based on the conclusions drawn from this virtual meeting and the feedback we got, the embassy, including the Office of Public Diplomacy and Studying Greece together, we have been working on two fronts. First, to devise a strategy for the USA, and second, to develop a communication plan. And the consulates around the United States have been actively involved in both. Uh, just to give you an example, our consul in Tampa, Mr. Chakos, set up a virtual workshop between academics from Florida, many of them Greek Americans, but not all of them Greek Americans, and the Studying Greece program. The strong interest was reflected in the high numbers of participation. The workshop has been recorded and along with targeted presentations is part of a valuable toolkit which uh, all the consuls here in the United States will be able to share with academics uh, across the United States uh, and academics who are already on board or academics who will come on board at a later stage. 
As the pandemic hopefully subsides, we hope that virtual workshops will be followed by actual visits to campuses all over the United States to inform students and professors in person about the opportunities offered by this program. It is my deep conviction that there is huge potential for attracting American students to Greek universities. We're just at the beginning of a long road. We are all on the same page when it comes to the educational cooperation and exchange between Greece and the US. Our diaspora is an incredible added value to this challenging enterprise. We have the vision and now we have the tools and uh, it's up to us to make it a, a success story. Our cooperation with the American Embassy in Greece is also vital. Um, I'm a product of uh, Greek students to the United States, uh, so I'm very happy that the director of the Fulbright program is on board uh, this meeting. Uh, and uh, I want to assure the state of Greece and the Minister Karameos that the Greek Embassy and the Greek consulates in the United States work full hard with all full heartedly for the success of this program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Papadopoulou. And uh, this introductory session, uh, last but definitely not least, is Mr. Uh, Alan Goodman, the Chief Executive Officer of the Institute of International Education, which, if I'm not mistaken, two years ago, marked its centennial, uh, Mr. Goodman. Costa, thank you very much. And colleagues, thank you for the honor of joining this keynote session. Uh, it's been a privilege for my colleagues and I at IIE to be working on what has been an historic project with Greece. Uh, historic in two respects. First of all, is the largest international academic partnership we have had in our 102 years. Uh, Claire Banks Overman is on the call, we'll describe it a bit later, but the response of Greek institutions and American institutions was overwhelming and got even better as the pandemic unfolded. And I think it showed the spirit of both Greece and America to rediscover each other. Secondly, I, I think it's historic because it represents the discovery by the new world of modern Greece. Uh, it's a discovery by American institutions of Greece, which binds us, which founds our civilization uh, and binds us in the 21st century uh, just as much as it inspired us through all of the other millennia. Uh, the, the partnerships that have started now will only grow and prosper as we can resume travel with each other. I was also initially very grateful uh, to the United Nations General Assembly for creating this day, because for us at IIE, every day is International Education Day. And they invited us to speak uh, at the General Assembly when it was uh, first convened to mark this day. Uh, I was privileged to join a panel with an Assistant Secretary General of UNESCO, the Superintendent of the New York City Public Schools, and the head of the teachers union. Now, the UNESCO representative gave, gave a pretty good talk uh, about the importance of education, about how it's a global requirement, a global need. I, I was a little disappointed uh, that the superintendent of New York City schools didn't mention the word international. No, nor did the head of the teachers union until I realized that the UN didn't create uh, the International Education Day, but it created an, a day about, inter, about education internationally. So when I got to speak, I apologized for misreading the invitation and, and said, nevertheless, every day ought to be International Education Day and international should be part of everybody's education at, at every level. That's a big goal. Um, it's an outsized goal. Uh, it's a goal that Greece and America share, uh, and we have the rest of this century to work on it. But your embrace of internationalization as a strategy for building peace, building relations between countries, building countries, building future economies, I think is exemplary to the whole world, and we really appreciate being part of it. I, I also wanted to mention that some of you may have noticed from our emails that we 
have a new scholarship program at IIE uh, called the Odyssey Scholarships. It is inspired by Greece. Uh, Odysseus was a, a, a displaced person uh, for many years. Uh, this is a scholarship for only for refugee and displaced students uh, who, would, as Odysseus did, longs to see the return of Don in his home. They long to go to their home and, and build back better based on the learning they get on these scholarships. So Greece inspires us in many ways uh, over many millennia, and I look forward to all that we can do together. Thank you, colleagues, for having me a part of this opening session. Thank you very much, Mr. Goodman, for your uh, insight and for your uh, uh, remarks. I would like to thank uh, everyone who participated in this uh, uh, introductory session. Uh, it was really useful uh, for me, definitely. I believe for everyone who's watching as well. And uh, now we can, uh, I think we can uh, move uh, forward uh, to do our first uh, uh, session and uh, uh, the presentation of uh, the International Academic uh, uh, Partnership uh, Program. Uh, Ms. Claire Overman, the head of higher education initiative at the Institute of International Education. I don't see her, but I, I think she can see us and she can hear us. Ms. Overman. Hello, thank you so much for having me. And I'm going to very briefly share my screen um, so that I can just share one quick slide. Well, wonderful. Happy uh, International Day of Education to everybody. And thank you again for having me here. As Costa said, my name is Claire Overman and I'm the head of higher education initiatives at IIE. And it's been such a pleasure to work on the International Academic Partnership Program together with my colleagues at the Greek Ministry of Education and Religious Affairs and at the US Embassy. So thank you all to your, for your support. I've been invited to briefly talk about the IAPP program um, because it didn't just start yesterday. It didn't just start in 2019. It actually started over a decade ago um, at a time when you know, every institution was interested in international partnerships and maybe they had a lot and maybe they had many, but what we kept hearing from especially US institutions was that partnerships were not necessarily being created in a strategic manner that they were kind of haphazard and all over the place, that perhaps MOUs were sitting in drawers co collecting dust. And so together with a number of experts, we created the I IAPP program with the intent to give partnerships a more strategic framework. Um, and the, the model that we use is to provide institutions with a strategic planning guide about the key questions and homework and preparation that they need to ask of their own campuses before even trying to go create partnerships with other institutions. We provide one-on-one -on -one mentorship with experts in the partnership realm. We provide webinars and information sessions. And then indeed, as Ambassador Pyatt said, we do uh, organize an in-country delegation so that people can meet each other in person. And all of this is so that we can provide the knowledge and the tools and the context necessary for institutions to create solid, good strategic decisions when it comes to partnering with a specific country. So over the last uh, 12 years or so, we've run more than 15 IAPP programs focusing on over 11 different focus countries and engaged more than 200 US and international higher ed institutions uh, in these programs. And we've seen a lot of success, not just in the number of partnerships that have been created as a result of the program, but really more importantly, in terms of how institutions are viewing partnership development in a more strategic way. And I think across the field, we've seen this evolve over time. And then in 2019, uh, together in partnership with the ministry and with support from the US Embassy, we launched the IAPP Greece program and we kicked that off in December. Um, and you'll see here on the screen, the 29 US and 25 Greek institutions who have remained committed to that program throughout the years. And I, I really felt it was important to put each and every name of those institutions up on the screen because they have persevered and remained committed to this partnership program over, over the last year and a half while we've faced the pandemic. And of course, nobody could have anticipated the challenges that ar arose from the pandemic, 
Um, and we have had to adapt and change accordingly. Um, and we've been so impressed with how all of the participating institutions have been able to do that along with us and in many ways really led the way. Um, and like I'd say, everything related to the pandemic, all of the innovations that we are actually seeing, we are learning so much. And the IAPP program has actually been indelibly changed because of the innovations that we're seeing as a result of the pandemic. So first and foremost, we were affirmed through surveys and through talking to all our participating institutions that indeed partnerships are more important than ever right now. And throughout the pandemic, we saw the strength and the power that partnerships can bring. Uh, we also saw a, a number of places where, where things can be accomplished virtually. I think we're seeing this across education, across uh, the world, about how much we can achieve virtually. So for example, in the past, we may have perhaps somewhat rushed into doing an in-person delegation right away to have some initial conversations and allow people to be in the same room and meet each other. But really throughout the pandemic, so many of those initial conversations happened virtually. Um, and in fact, we're able to flourish even more and have the time to evolve over the last year and a half. Um, so in fact, when we surveyed our participating institutions recently, almost everybody had at least initiated conversations with their counter counterparts and many were exploring even additional contacts um, and potential partnerships as well. And then a number of institutions had really evolved a lot and were in active discussions or even signed MOUs with their partners. From an administrative perspective, one of the key things that we did to facilitate this was to collect institutional profile forms where institutions were able to put their partnership priorities in writing, as well as a contact list for, for the various experts and faculty members that were needed in order to make those partnerships flourish. Since as we know, it's so key, not only to get administrators together, but to allow for faculty to have direct contact with one another. So in conclusion, of course, we are looking forward to that eventual in-person delegation to Greece eventually, and we continue to monitor the situation together with the ministry, um, and we hope to get there very soon. But in the meantime, we are we're so proud um, and appreciative of all of the participating institutions for the flexibility, adaptability, and perseverance that they've shown throughout these first year and a half. Thank you so much, and uh, back to you. Thank you very much, Ms. Wolverman. Uh, and I see you, you, uh, you did your first, your first degree on uh, Spanish language and culture. I think it's pretty close, right? Southern uh, Europe, uh, Mediterranean countries, both. You have a very good uh, sense of what's like uh, to study in, uh, in uh, Greece. Uh, thank you very much for this. I will now uh, we'll go now to number two and our session, which is uh, the presentation of uh, study in Greece uh, virtual fair. And now we'll first have to go to Mr. Christos. Christos I'm sorry. Michal Lakelis, who is the project manager of the study in Greece and also an assistant professor at the Department of Informatics and Telematics at the Harapopin University here in Athens. Thank you very much, honorable and dear hosts, guests, and participants. The 24th of January of each year turned out to be a very important date regarding the process of internationalization of the Greek higher education as much for the study in Greece project since it gives us the motivation, the opportunity to work on and present the advances and the progress of the project. Based on the support of the Greek Ministries of Education and Foreign Affairs, thank you so much, Madam Minister, Mrs. Kerameus, and Secretary General, Mr. Dimitropoulos, and Mr. Hitsoulakis. The diplomatic authorities of Greece, thank you so much, Mrs. Papadopoulou, for your kind words and your support. Of USA and other countries, the excellent collaboration with the Greek universities and our continuous efforts we have so far managed to put Greece on the international educational map. Although we have still a, a long way to go, we are pretty confident that Greece will, shont, will shortly become a popular and highly appreciated destination for studies, university and academic collaborations, short-term programs and other academic activities. Part of the core mission of study in Greece is the development of information systems and digital platforms to assist the implementation of the project facing its dynamic needs and the needs of the internationalization process itself. Towards this direction, today we will have the pleasure to launch the Study in Greece Virtual Fair, which is based on a 3D virtual environment and is dedicated to the Greek higher education. 
Greek universities participate through their virtual booths, providing information for their international programs and answering the questions of the academic community. The virtual exhibition will be available throughout the year 2022, and the information will be continuously updated. Furthermore, we will introduce you to the MATSIG platform, an open platform for implementing the digital mediation between demand and offering for academic activities, thus facilitating the exchange of information between the Greek and the international academic community in a simple user-friendly way. Matching is another tool to serve for the promotion of international partnerships of the Greek universities. Without any further delay, I give the floor to my partners to start the presentations. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much for this. We we'll now give the floor to, uh, as you said, Mr. Georgios Hatifanasis, Public Relations Manager of Study in Greece. Thank you very much. I, I would like to welcome, uh, welcome every one of you in this uh, virtual fair. I will be brief because of the time and I will uh, share my screen in order to show you the some uh, some uh, key aspects of our virtual platform i hope that you can see my screen so this is the lancera platform and i'm happy to take you uh, in a tour to our uh, downtown athens academia as uh, you can see and if we enter after we have registered to this event we have incorporated some aspects of uh, National Capodistrian University reception and uh, many other 3D representations of this event. So here you can find that uh, the, the reception has some documents that are ready for you. These are some study in Greece uh, programs that we are hosting, some summer schools, Hellenic heritage programs, study abroad programs. We also have uh, added the conference agenda and the international programs catalog that I have to be honest with you, it is freshly squeezed and updated until today. So please take a look to our English taught and um, in uh, programs also in other languages, a uh, bachelor's and uh, also master's. But I will also like to take you to the exhibitors hall. And here you can see all the programs, uh, sorry for, uh, for the screen that is uh, off center. And uh, we can also see all the programs that are, uh, all the universities that are representing Greece with their international programs, as you can see here. And also some additional documents and media. This platform will be online, not only today, but it will be live uh, through April. And then on April, we will have uh, another session uh, for students, for international students that want to, that want to, uh, to find out more about, uh, about uh, Greek education. Also on the speaking session, you can also see here the uh, the main uh, the main hall of uh, academia, and this is where the live event is taking place. So please feel free to navigate through the virtual fair. It will be opened not only today but until spring. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Hadifanasis. This looks like a bit of a, a, a metaverse uh, something uh, environment <laughs> the one we just uh, saw it's a very good initiative mr george Fragiarakis, development operation uh engineer studying greece will uh, put us further on with this discussion hello uh, everyone i'm honored to be here with you and uh, i will uh, share my screen in order to uh, show you our uh, tool that I think you can see my screen. Okay, uh, so uh, my name is uh, Fragedakis George and uh, I'm here, uh, I'm honored to present you Matsig uh, platform, an open platform uh, that uh, 
aims to bring closer to the academic community. But uh, before uh, uh, starting my uh, presentation, uh, let me uh, start an introductory video we, uh, we prepared for you uh, in order to, uh, to understand, be understand better uh, our platform. So uh, that's a, that, that, that was a video that uh, uh, is about our platform, which uh, developed uh, by a, a studying risk development team. But uh, before planning a solution, you need uh, a problem to solve and uh, all problems uh, coming with a question. The question uh, for us uh, was how to match academic activities and interests across uh, the world and uh, how to get the closer uh, uh, Greece to all over the world. So our platform answers uh, to that question by its name, EMATSIG. EMATSIG is a summer school, um, conference, an internship and more uh, joint ventures that uh, you will find on platform and uh, you have already uh, mentioned on uh, on this uh, session. The mission of uh, uh, this tool is to enhance and, and support effective uh, mapping between the Greek and the international academic community. Uh, getting deeper on uh, the platform, uh, the main features of our platform, as you may notice on the video already, uh, are the ability to express interest about the MATSIG, uh, notification and messaging between uh, uh, the registered users. And last but not least, uh, uh, the platform can uh, play the role of a marketplace when uh, MATSIG uh, will be established or, or, or within the platform. Our platform supports advanced uh, search uh, with many filters and criteria. Uh, that any user uh, can, uh, can search uh, his interests. We couldn't ignore uh, the trends, so we developed our platform to be friendly for any device. 
your mobile phone, uh, your tablet, or of course your desktop. But if the platform is only friendly for a device, doesn't mean that the user uh, will use it. So we were very mindful while, uh, uh, while we were designing it. And uh, you don't need to have any technical skills to navigate or use our platform. So the experience uh, of uh, navigation and use is as, as friendly as it could be. You first log in with your social account. And if you don't have, uh, you, uh, you can register an account in our platform. Second, you create your matching or express interest on, uh, on a new, on a matching that you, you find. Third, uh, you organize your matching with uh, your new partner. And as soon as you establish it, you can publish it uh, to, uh, to the world and uh, you can start accepting applications uh, for uh, your event. Of course, the journey for us has no end and we are planning to develop more functionalities and tools by converting your feedback into actions. So please visit our platform and start using it. Uh, we are here to help you if you need to. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this. I would like very much to, to use it. I think I'm way past my student uh, days, but there are very students who are currently in this are very lucky. Uh, let's give the floor now to Mr. Filipos uh, Kubunis, uh, Erasmus Plus International Contact Point and Project Manager of uh, International Credit Mobility. And he has also served for many years, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, the EU Commission in uh, the same uh, capacity, Mr. Kubunis. Thank you. Thank you. Let me share my screen. It's okay now? I think so. So, dear, dear Minister, dear Deputy Minister, dear Secretary Generals, Your Excellencies, dear participants, I would like to uh, thank the organizer for the invitation to participate in this virtual fair. My name, as also said, is Filipos Kumpunis, and I work for the State Scholarship Foundation, the national agency of the Erasmus Plus program in the field of education and training. Since 2014, the Erasmus Plus program has acknowledged the need to boost internationalization at the world level. The previous program period has a stronger international dimension, supporting projects for cooperation or exchange between Europe and the rest of the world. In the framework of the next Erasmus Plus program, the international dimension will be further strengthened, building on the success of the existing key, act key actions and expanding international to other sectors. For over 35 years, Europe has funded the Erasmus program, which has enabled over 4 million European students to study, train, and gain experience abroad. There are various important characteristics of the new Erasmus Plus program, as you can see in this slide. And international dimension is uh, an aspect that uh, is containing in these important characteristics. Erasmus Plus is the European Union's program to support project partnerships, events, and mobility in the areas of education, training, youth, and sport. It has a strong international dimension for cooperation between these 33 countries and third countries across the world. Erasmus Plus provides a range of opportunities that have an international dimension, both for individuals and for institutions. All countries in yellow on the map are covered by the ICM action that now I'm going to present you briefly. International Credit Mobility supports the mobility of individual and higher education institutions between program countries and partner countries. Through ICM, European Hays can set up mobility agreements with partners around the world to send and receive students and staff. International Credit Mobility was launched in the 2014 to 2020 program and to some extent could be considered an extension of the classic Erasmus Inter-European Higher Education Mobility to the rest of the world. Since 2015, Erasmus Plus opened up mobility opportunities in the field of higher education to individual organizations from other parts of the world. Erasmus Plus is an essential tool to promote people-to-people -to -people connectivity worldwide through its external dimension, 
aiming at cementing links between the European education area and the rest of the world. Building on the experience and the lessons learned from the previous program period, Erasmus Plus is strongly aligned with the EU external and geopolitical priorities. ICM is a decentralized action, meaning that it is managed by the national agency in the 33 Erasmus Plus countries. It is a global action. The budget available is split into discrete envelopes for each region of the world. The size of each envelope is set according to the European Union external priorities. The budget of the action will come from two external financial instruments and split between those 12 regions budget envelopes we can see in this slide. ICM project contributes to strengthening societal links through educational exchanges and mobility. The aim is to support students and staff in higher education institutions, acquire and enhance key skills, competencies, and employability. Mobility for studying or training increases students' technical, interpersonal, and intercultural skills and competencies, as well as their confidence, ability to achieve goals, and social and cultural openness. ICM aims to support reinforce the capacities, quality and relevance of the labor market and society at the participating institution and support the exchange of good practices. It helps also to improve the quality of higher education. The activities supporting in ICM are student mobility, which can take the form of a study period abroad at the Parton Hay, or a traineeship abroad in an enterprise, a research institute, a laboratory, an organization, or any other relevant workplace. And also staff mobility, which can take the form of a teaching period for academic staff and for invited staff or non-academic organization, and a training period for teaching and non-teaching staff in the form of training events abroad. ICM supports two-way mobility. All partners in an ICM project can send and host students and staff as described in their submitted project and provided that a relevant grant has been secured. Each Erasmus Plus national agency, like EK in Greece, established in a program country, has a budget to fund a number of mobility projects between Hayes and that program country and those in partner countries. This grant will cover the cost of the individual and travel grants and includes a portion of four organizational support. The selection of projects for ICM is based on an annual call for proposal issued by the European Commission. Only higher education institutions in the program countries can apply. They do so on behalf of their partners. The ICM project in their application contains the countries and partner universities they intend to co cooperate with, as well as their cooperation plan in each region. Applications are subject to a quality assessment managed by the national agency in the Erasmus Plus countries. Upon successfully passing the established quality criteria, they will be allocating an ICM grant spread in different regional envelopes. In coming to the end of my speech, uh, let's point out some key messages for partner country universities like USA. In four non-associated third country universities should know that universities from all 33 EU member states and associated countries will be applying to set up agreement with universities from their region each year. They should explore their existing contacts at institutional level and see which faculties already have a staff or student mobility arrangements with European University to see if this could form part of an Erasmus Plus agreement. For more information about all these opportunities, you may contact the International Relations Office of your institution. Thank you for listening. It has been both an honor and a pleasure to speak and share with you this uh, international opportunity through Erasmus Plus program. And I hope you will consider participating to this opportunity. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, Mr. Kumburis, for a very interesting uh, presentation. We will now move forward to Fulbright Foundation uh, Greece. As Ambassador Payet said before, Ms. Artem Zenetu is the national asset. And uh, may I add that she was helping foster partnerships between Greek and US uh, higher education communities way before it was full. Uh, Ms. Zenetu, uh, thank you very much for being here with us. We will first see uh, a video.
Oh, education is life changing. And it has changed lives. I've seen it change lives. It changed my own. Now, everybody doesn't look like you or operate like you do or have the same religion as you or the same value. Fulbright does that for you. It sets you up to meet so many different people. Education is about opening your eyes, opening your heart, going into places, into thoughts that are new. Getting a scholarship and working with someone for that long really creates bonds that are going to last for a very, very long time, if not forever. One of the actual most enriching parts has been also figuring out how to live my own home life overseas. Not only does it support you while you're here, but it does really seem to want to help you in the future. There's another time in your life or another program that would afford you the same experience. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation to highlight opportunities to study in Greece. We just watched a one minute uh, video trailer, uh, which highlights basically what you can find uh, in more depth in the Fulbright YouTube channel on US grantees having received Fulbright scholarships to Greece. And it encompasses a diversity of uh, project proposals and disciplines, which I think is essential to realize how many different types of disciplines can be supported. Because when the Fulbright started about uh, more than close to 75 years ago in 1948, uh, it was one of the few institutions actually that fostered these types of collaborations. And it has been, I would say, a successful but lonely journey. Today, uh, there are more than 6,000 uh, scholarship recipients, US and Greek citizens that have participated in these educational exchanges and form actually the bridge between our two countries, Greece and the United States. Fulbright is a flagship program uh, of the United States government in partnership with 160 countries. Fulbright Greece takes pride in operating the first Fulbright program in Europe and the second globally. What is really interesting to see is that Greece, based on statistics by the Institute of International Education that releases through its open doors uh, report each November, uh, remains one of the leading uh, destinations for US study abroad programs. And despite uh, the years of the pandemic that we saw, so that we witnessed a slow decrease uh, uh, in numbers, in 2018-2019 academic year, Greece hosted a record high number of US study abroad students of uh, about five, more than actually 5,800 students participated uh, in programs in Greece and Greece ranked in 12th position worldwide. So rest assured that Greece is gaining interest and momentum. I would briefly, considering that our audience today are mostly US uh, education administrators, I would like to briefly state that the Fulbright program awards grants both to US and Greek citizens. And uh, we will focus more on sort of like grants for US citizens, such as grants for students that are like from six to nine months to conduct independent research or specific programs. Uh, for students that either hold a bachelor's or a master's degree or a PhD. Interestingly enough, uh, in the last few years, we've seen some amazing examples of collaboration of students from, uh, Louis, uh, from the University of Louisville in Kentucky coming actually to uh, Democritus University of Thrace in the Department of Molecular Biology and Genetics. Then we shift to the West Coast and seen students from the University of California in Berkeley collaborating with the National School of Public Health in Athens. Programs for scholars uh, that, are, that wish either to conduct research or lecture in Greece uh, 
Applicants must possess a doctoral or terminal degree. And these grants are up to four months or semester long programs. And uh, we've seen interesting projects ranging in medical sciences and so like focusing on hospital acquired infections, HAIs, which unfortunately it's something very timely and from the university, from the Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania, University of Pennsylvania in collaboration with the National School of Public Health and the Department of Health Services Organization and Management in Athens. Other program uh, on human, humanitarian relief effort with the Kennesaw State University in a program that was developed in collaboration with the city of Athens at the time about seven years ago uh, when Athens was coping with the massive influx of refugees and migrants. And this program was in conflict management and humanitarian risk, um, relief. And I'm pleased to say that among our audience today who will present later, is Professor uh, Ravunelli uh, from University of Athens that just recently started this amazing, was launched with Harvard University on migrant and refugee uh, program. In addition to the scholar, to sort of like the more lengthy grants, we also have offering sort of short-term grants uh, for specialists that are not able to leave from US University for more than a period of two to six weeks. And, uh, one such program that was supported uh, through the specialist is with the University of Iowa College of Medicine Child Protection Program and the ELISA Society for the, Present for the Prevention of Cruelty and Safety to Children and the Alaia Kiriakou Hospital in Athens, including train the trainers programs on educating medical staff to be able to detect uh, child abuse. Um, and such issues. So essentially, uh, the Fulbright program has been supporting uh, a number of scholarships uh, from the US to Greece and creating uh, long lasting collaborations. And we were very pleased when a few years ago, uh, Professor Michalakelis from the study uh, in Greece program came to visit Fulbright to discuss how we can also support this endeavor. So in addition to being able to offer Fulbright scholarships to US and Greek citizens, the Fulbright uh, website offers information about studying Greece and highlighting Greece as an uh, educational destination. In the past few years, we collaborated again with the Institute of International Education through a generous grant of the Stavros Niarchos Foundation for the uh, study for the Greek Diaspora Fellowship Program, and I'm very pleased to see that in our uh, participants, in the presenters actually today, there are two alumni of this program, which has supported more than 120 scholars of the Greek diaspora to come to Greece and enhance collaborations uh, with Greek uh, educational institutions. This is the third year that I'm participating in the International Education Day organized by the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And I can say that tremendous progress has been achieved. And it's wonderful to see that even in the midst of the pandemic, we managed to create and forge virtual exchanges in order to be able to better prepare us when we can actually meet in person. Thank you for the opportunity. And please do visit the Fulbright website to learn more about opportunities for both Greek and US citizens. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Zenetra. Thank you very much for your remarkable work all these years in the food drive uh, program. And uh, now let's see how the partnerships are working between the Greek and the US uh, universities. And uh, we'll start with the National Capitalistian University of Athens and Harvard uh, University. Uh, Mrs. Maria uh, Rabunelli, a law school prof professor since last October, uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And, uh, she was also, uh, uh, since we were in the Fulbright session, uh, she was also a Fulbright uh, visiting uh, scholar. And I think you chose uh, 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 University of California, Berkeley. So you, you, you went for the sea and sun uh, again. <laughs> well, uh, it was, a, thank you so much, uh, it was certainly sunnier in California than it is today in Athens with all this uh, snow uh, out of my window. But there you are, yes, indeed, uh, I was very, I was pleased and honored actually to be a Fulbrighter 
at the year the Fulbright Foundation was celebrating 70 years of its program in Greece. So I do go for the big dates and the, the big occasions. Um, and it was really uh, a most enjoyable uh, experience, one that we would hope that many more would actually have, both in Greece and in the US. Uh, I'm here today with you to um, talk to you a little bit about uh, our latest initiative. Um, it is a product of two years of work, and it is entirely, entirely the child of this platform, this joint cooperation between uh, the Greek and the US authorities, uh, this platform that has been uh, brought forward uh, in order to uh, put together uh, eff educational efforts in the US and in Greece. Uh, the new element in this uh, attempt is actually the institutional element. It is perfectly true that we do have long relationships between uh, the academic communities in Greece and the US. But what was even truer is that most of these initiatives were actually based on personal relationships. So uh, people were actually invited to and fro on their own personal capacity, which is of course brilliant in terms of, of excellence uh, for um, the, the, the Greek universities in particular. But what was missing is this institutional element, uh, this, this parameter that would stay on when we move away and that would stay on for future generations to come. So what we have done these past um, two years, it took us almost two years, uh, the pandemic notwithstanding, uh, was to uh, create a new research hub at the University of Athens, bringing together four different schools and departments at the University of Athens. And I'm sharing with you my screen very, very quickly to just uh, get you through our brand new um, website. Uh, this, and we have created the Refugee and Migration Studies Hub to bring together our knowledge, experience, and expertise in addressing refugee and migratory flows in their infinite variety, no more, no less than that. What is important in that respect is that uh, we have built on the experience of all of us. Uh, we bring together these uh, different people from uh, uh, different parts of the university, uh, the law school, uh, the medical school, uh, the department of political science, the department of media. And therefore we have a very general approach a very holistic approach, a very comprehensive approach to build on. And the very first of our endeavors, which of course, as you can tell, would expand onto other research projects and not, is really uh, a, a, a new summer school that we have uh, built together uh, with the University of Harvard. And uh, the idea here is uh, not just to use that as an occasion to bring together faculty from uh, both universities, but also as a launching pad for future collaboration. What we have been planning is actually to bring together in Athens, in Nafplion and in Lesbos, people for three weeks uh, with the support of the uh, University of Athens on their one hand and uh, the FXP uh, Center for Health and Human Rights uh, in, uh, at Harvard, uh, with the support of the Harvard Surf Center for Hellenic Studies. Uh, we do hope that we would be able to offer not just an academic experience without precedent, but also a comprehensive approach with field work with an idea that would be mostly comprehensive and at the end of the day, incomparable. What is also of interest, and I'm sure that uh, um, uh, Vasilia would also talk about that, is the fact that we are sharing equally uh, the uh, number of students. The University of Athens would select 15 students, 
coming from all European and US universities. The University of Harvard would actually uh, provide us with another 15. And in this class of 30, with very few but privileged individuals who would be able to create bonds and, uh, and have an experience uh, of the field uh, hands-on, uh, fully comprehensive from all the parameters of the migratory phenomenon, we would hope to build a, a new generation of leaders in this particular uh, field, um, create policy papers, contribute to the present discussion, uh, invite new ideas and suggestions, and, and uh, contemplate uh, the future. I would stop here. I would um, make sure that you do have all of you the relevant information, and we will be happy to deliver that uh, uh, far and wide so as to attract the best quality of students and there's no uh, question about that. We're also looking forward to increased cooperation uh, with several institutions, the Fulbright obviously among them, uh, to provide scholarships. Um, but I, I, would, uh, I, would allow, I, will, I would stop here and allow Vasilia to explain a bit more about the program. Um, we have created, final word, we have created a community already uh, among us in preparing this program. Imagine what we can do um, in the years to come. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for this, Ms. Gavinelli, Professor Gavinelli. And now the, the, the only light that I have seen today comes from the Zoom of uh, Vasilia Digibiki, the director of the Harvard uh, RMS uh, Summer School uh, program. This is kind of contradictory. We'll be expecting that one of the reasons they come to Greece is for the sun, but you're the only, the only source of the sun today. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have a little bit of snow in Boston as well. Um, Your Excellencies, dear respected colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure and honor to be part of this very important event today. On behalf of my colleagues at the Harvard FXP Center, I would like to express how honored we are to embark upon this new collaboration that will open the door for auspicious prospects for research, pedagogy, and advocacy on a phenomenon that has plagued humanity. The Harvard FXB Center for Health and Human Rights, a university-wide research and teaching center, works on and advocates for human rights for almost 30 years now, and specifically towards improving the fundamental manner in which societies and governments approach distress migration. So to join forces with our esteemed colleagues in the University of Athens and to begin a new chapter of collaborative pedagogy and research on this phenomenon is truly a momentous event. And it is an honor for me to present in more detail today the first initiative that was born from this partnership, the Joint Summer Program on Migration and Refugee Studies that is set to begin this July. As Professor Gavonelli mentioned, this is an intensive, three-week-long, comprehensive and interdisciplinary program that will bring together graduate students from the two universities, as well as students from other European and American universities, students from different backgrounds, disciplines, and cultures, and with different experiences and expertise to study the very real and extensive human, social, and political consequences of forced migration. By offering a multidisciplinary curriculum, the program will enable students to understand the nature of forced migration in context of conflict, environmental degradation and natural disasters, and poverty. To gain a more holistic understanding of the historical and contemporary causes and effects of such movements. To grasp the key legal, political, and social aspects of the existing migratory flows in the Mediter Mediterranean region and beyond. To comprehend emerging conceptual policy frameworks to understand the implications of existing state practices, to analyze the role of public health, the role of media and NGOs in forced migration settings, and to understand the impact of host community solidarity on distressed migrants' well-being and migration policies. Placing situated learning at the epicenter of its pedagogical approach, the summer program will combine both theoretical and analytic knowledge, and will employ a series of pedagogical methods ranging from lectures, seminars, and interactive sessions 
to field work, all led by distinct scholars and practitioners from across the world. And it further places students at the center of two focal points for distress migration flows in both Greece and the region, Athens and the island of Lesbos. In these two places, students will also engage in field work, having the opportunity to directly interact with local human rights organizations on the ground and discuss challenges and practices. The summer program will also take place in the city of Nafplio, a historic Greek city that is also the home of the Harvard Center for Hellenic Studies, a critical partner of ours to this initiative, allowing all students to access Harvard University academic resources to further investigate and learn while on its premises. And we're also very proud to include as a critical component of this summer program, those voices that have been sidelined by forced migration. The program is providing an opportunity to two refugee and asylum seekers in Greece who were forced to stop their tertiary education to join students and learn alongside them while having the opportunity to share their own experiences. Harvard has also secured two scholarships for Harvard students with refugee backgrounds uh, whose financial situation would otherwise preclude their participation. We are confident that uh, students and future advocates will benefit tremendously from this program because it sets the stage for the exchange of knowledge, experience, expertise, and skill sets across disciplines and continents and allows scholars and students to see the phenomenon in its fullest context. We are very happy to say that though this collaboration and program are only in their early stages, they have already received a tremendously positive response from students, scholars, international organizations, civil and political society, which highlights further the necessity and timeliness of this effort. We are honored to respond to this need, to embark upon this collaboration with our esteemed peers, and through research, pedagogy, advocacy, and the passion and drive of students move towards building a better world for those in need. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, we will now move forward to see what's going on in the partnership of the National Technical University of uh, Athens, one of the leading institutions in Greece and uh, in uh, Europe, I may say, and uh, Columbia University. Mr. Andreas Budovic is with us, director of uh, NTUA, who has uh, also studied both in Greece and in the US in his uh, student years. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in the spirit and the purpose of the International Education Day, may I say that Greek universities have a long way to go towards their internationalization, in particular with regard to their academic relationships with the universities in the United States of America. Uh, it's also fair to say that today's event is uh, really an important one, since it declares the determination of the political leadership of the country and the academic leadership from both sides to strengthen the bridges between Greek and US universities. Uh, before I talk about the agreement between the National Technical University of Athens and Columbia University, uh, let me share some thoughts about the bridges. Uh, establishing uh, bilateral uh, relationships is certainly a well-defined project, although complicated regarding its design and implementation. Other bridges are of a different kind and of wider scope. For example, those bringing close the Greek scientific diaspora, which is uh, very strong in the US, with the corresponding Greek community. It is worth working hard in this direction too. Uh, and I'm glad that in the next session, an initiative called HIAS, the Hellenic Institute of uh, Advanced Studies will be introduced by its uh, president, Professor Petros Kumutsakos from uh, Harvard. NTUA is actively involved in HIAS. I suggest that among other short, medium and long-term benefits from such activities, we consider their potential impact on reversing brain drain from Greece, as well as helping with brain gain. 
Uh, it was in November 10 of 2021 when the Provost Mary Boyce and myself signed officially uh, live through teleconference the agreement between NTUA and Columbia University. The agreement is about dual degrees from both institutions and goes as follows. Uh, Columbia and NTUA agreed to establish a dual degree program, which upon successful completion leads to the awarding of two degrees. Uh, the master's degree in various disciplines from Columbia and the master's degree in various disciplines from NTUA. For students starting enrollment at NTUA, the program is expected to take 10 semesters for completion, including eight semesters at NTUA and two semesters at Columbia. For students starting enrollment at Columbia for an MS degree, uh, the program is expected to take four semesters for completion, including two semesters at Columbia and two semesters at NTUA. Uh, the NTUA schools and the corresponding Columbia departments uh, have eligible programs covered in uh, this agreement. Uh, this agreement is uh, the first of uh, its kind for Greek universities, mainly for two reasons. First, it refers to undergraduate studies, and second, it's horizontal. That is, it covers all engineering disciplines from both sides. It took quite some time until we reached uh, our convergence. Uh, we had to deal with particular challenges, which do not pertain to MOUs within the European university system. I will mention just two. One is the mismatch between the five-year curriculum of the integrated master's degree for engineers from our side versus the four-year curriculum for the bachelor's degree from the other side. Another is uh, the tuition fees. As you can imagine, financial support of NTUA students going to Colombia and residing in the New York City is additional challenge, which will put limitations on the extent of the mobility, which of course will start at the pilot scale. Uh, we're happy with our agreement, which was uh, received enthusiastically by the NTUA community, and especially the students, as well as the alumni, but also by the Greek academia and beyond, the stakeholders, the state, the diaspora. Due to the uh, distinguished position of an Ivy League uh, university like Colombia, its agreement with the NTUA highlights the international reputation of our institution and significantly enhances the visibility of our students' diploma. In uh, addition, the collaboration offers the opportunity to our students who excel in their studies to be exposed in an academic environment dominated by multiculturalism, extroversion, creativity, excellence of education research by the pursuit of uh, success by joining forces through teamwork, but at the same time, with a lot of space for individual achievement and the search for opportunities in many, many directions. Uh, the NTUA is called upon to respond to the challenge of reciprocity provided for in the agreement by rapidly strengthening the internationalization of its studies, which in any case is dictated uh, by its position in the European academic map. Uh, I'm thankful to my colleagues in Colombia for their cooperation so far. Uh, the Provost Mary Boyce, the Vice Provost Professor Kahani, the Dean of Engineering Professor Chang, the Senior Associate Dean uh, Dr. Brogman, and of course, uh, the two representatives who are joining me in this short presentation, the Senior Associate Dean Jenny Mack and Ms. Uh, Gabriel Gannon, Executive Director of Graduate Admissions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Budovis. Uh, we are already one hour and 40 minutes into uh, this, so I would kindly ask, uh, ask uh, our next contributors to be a bit more shorter with uh, their uh, speeches. Uh, Dr. Jenny Mack is the next one, uh, Senior Associate Dean uh, Columbia Engineering. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my name is Gabrielle Gannon and I am our Executive Director of Graduate Admission here at Columbia Engineering. Uh, and I'm actually going to be re representing Columbia today. My apologies, Dr. Mack was pulled into some student affairs uh, 
issues as one as one can be, but Provost Boyce, Dean Chang, Senior Vice Dean Kachani, and Dr. Mack all send their regards. And like I said, I am so honored to be here. I'm going to quickly go through just a handful of slides to show you our commitment to, to this agreement and our commitment to global education as a whole. Global education is incredibly important to Columbia University. This is a quote from our president Bollinger who talks about our commitment and the necessity to be engaged at a global level. One way that we do that is through our global education centers, Columbia Global Centers, and they are located in nine locations all over the world. And it's really a wonderful way for us to engage globally. And of course, another way that we do this is our partnerships with top universities from all over the world. And that begins here with NTUA and it extends to universities in China and France and Italy and South America. Um, we are honored to have these types of collaborations because it strengthens the experience for students on our campus to be able to have the opportunity to learn alongside the NTUA students and to have the ability to go over and study on campus at NTUA. We're very excited about this opportunity and the, the dual master's degree offerings that students will be able to participate in. I wanted to briefly show um, some of our um, affiliates here who have come from Greek institutions. I focused on NTUA given our agreement. However, um, the, they are not the only Greeks on campus. Um, you will see uh, Manulis here. He is a sixth year computer science doctoral student. And you'll also see a number of our faculty. I, um, I actually couldn't fit them all on one slide. Uh, we, are, we have an abundance of very qualified Greek faculty members here on campus that our students are fortunate enough to learn from. And I will close here with this chart that it outlines for you um, and gives you an example of the programs at NTUA and how they align with our Columbia engineering programs. Uh, like I said, we are very excited about this partnership. I had the honor of presenting to over 300 NTUA students a few months ago with Professor Bouvidis, uh, and it was a wonderful event. And I am looking forward to more events and extending this partnership and seeing how it grows over the years. So thank you so much for having me. And uh, this has just been such a wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Cannon. And uh, now we move forward to the third best uh, practice. And uh, with us is uh, today, she will join us uh, right now, Ms. Uh, Professor Zoe Gavrilidou, Vice Rector of Academic Affairs and Student Welfare at the Democritus University of uh, Thrace. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, distinguished panelists. Uh, I would like to congratulate the Ministry of Education and Religious Affairs the General Secretariat of Higher Education, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Study in Greece, of course, on this inspiring initiative. Let me first take a look at the activities in which Democritus University of Thrace was engaged within the frame of IAAPP. Can you see the slides turning or it? Okay, great, thank you. So our university actively participated in this program by establishing contact with the following universities and the School of Classics and Humanities and the Department of Medicine were the most engaged participants in the IAAPP program, as you can see in the slide. George Mason University was contacted by members of the School of Classics and Humanities, and we are ready now to sign an MOU in the next Senate meeting. Columbia University was contacted by members of the Law School and the School of Classics and Humanities, and the Department of Medicine initiated a collaboration with Harvard University, and the second one with Rutgers University. My colleague from the Medicine Department, Prof Assistant Professor Christos Kodogiorgis, will present this collaboration in a while. Furthermore, an MOU was signed at the Department of Philology Initiative between Democritus University of Thrace and the University of Chicago, and especially the newly established 
Center for Hellenic Studies on the 9th of February and on the occasion of the International Greek Language Day, we co-organize an online event together with a third partner, the Consulate General of Greece in Chicago. Actually, I was informed that Her Excellence, uh, the Ambassador of Greece in USA, Alexandra Papadopoulou, will honor us uh, with her presence in the event. Finally, a fruitful collaboration was also developed between the School of Classics and Humanities and Princeton University. My presentation will focus on that. On the part, okay, uh, on part of Princeton University, Professor Dimitri Gondikas is responsible for this collaboration. He's quite familiar with the School of uh, Classics and Humanities since he was external evaluator of the Department of History and Ethnology. On part of uh, Democritus University of France, I was a person in charge. Unfortunately, Professor Gondikas can't be with us today, but he sends his regards. It would be interesting to start with some historic data in order to understand the two universities diachrony before coming to the synchrony. Founded in 1973, Democritus University of Thrace is the fifth oldest university in Greece, and the slide shows the order of foundation of uh, the older Greek universities. On the other hand, chartered in 1746, Princeton is the fourth oldest college in the United States. It is evident that more than 200 100 years of tradition separate the two universities. It would also be of interest to see how the two universities differ in numbers in order to get a clearer idea of the qualitative characteristics of the two universities. 1,289 faculty members versus 5,267 undergraduate students and 2,900 graduate enrollments give a five to one student to faculty ratio. Democritus University, on the other hand, uh, with 26,200 undergrads and more than 6,000 postgraduate students has a 50 to one faculty, student to faculty ratio 10 times higher than Princeton. So how did this collaboration unfold? Uh, let us look at the steps we followed in this collaboration. We started, of course, in mailing in, in 2020, and then we had a series of Zoom sessions from July to September uh, to 2020 in order to determine the type and context of the collaboration and then put that in writing in an MOU. The initial plan uh, was to co-organize in 2021 a summer school in Rodopi, Greece, where students from the University of Princeton and the School of Classics and Humanities of Democritus University of Thrace would interact in the frame of an excavation in Maronia, Thrace, Greece. Students of the Department of Greek would offer daily courses of Greek language, while students of the Department of History and Ethnology would offer guided tours at the main historic landmarks of the region. A rich cultural program was also included in the summer school. The program was meant to offer an empowering opportunity for non-formal education uh, through field work and also to promote cultural immersion and intercultural communication development to both groups of students. The program combined three components, a theoretical one focusing on the history of the site and the vast region of Thrace, workshops on architecture and urbanism, pottery styles, etc. A practical one training on the methodology and ex excavation techniques, work on the site and at the museum, clinic and cataloging of artifacts, profile drawing, documentation, etc. And also a discovery component, including uh, field trips to various archaeolo archaeological sites and museums or cultural landmarks in the wider regions. However, due to COVID pandemic, Princeton University cancelled all activities for 2021. And recently, we've learned also for 2022, all the activities abroad. So looking in the future, which are our next steps? First, Princeton has to nominate the excavation supervisor and allow trips abroad, then both institutions have to sign the MOU, which is almost ready, and hopefully in 2023, uh, we will have uh, the, the summer school will take place. And a few words about the IAEP overall experience for Democritus University of Thrace. 
before closing, let me share uh, with you that. Uh, actually, the IAPP program with, uh, was a flexible and effective tool for us for partnership building open to new possibilities. And it offered Democritus University of Thrace an empowering and in-depth understanding of the opportunities for strong academic collaboration. Thank you so much for including me in this panel and back to you. Thank you very much, Professor uh, We will remain at the Democracy University of Thrace uh, and we will welcome Professor Theodore Bonsabinidis, head of laboratory of uh, hygiene and environmental protection of the Department of Medicine. Professor Bonsabinidis. Uh, prof Hello, everybody. Good evening. I'm uh, Assistant Professor Christos Kondo Georgis. Unfortunately, Professor Bonsabinidis, due to his uh, duties in uh, the Public Hospital of Alexandropolis, he could manage to be with us. So I will represent the Laboratory of Hygiene and Environmental Protection and the Department of Medicine. Uh, and I'm going to um, describe the collaboration that we have uh, with Rutgers University. Uh, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving us uh, the opportunity to be here and uh, present uh, this uh, collaboration and uh, all the uh, distinguished uh, guests and speakers that um, gave us uh, a really nice view of uh, the possibilities that uh, we have, uh, the Greek universities and uh, the universities from the United States of America to uh, build um, a new uh, generation uh, to give to our students the opportunity to be much more uh, open-minded and to work uh, harder uh, for the new world. Uh, so um, I would like to just for a few minutes to, to present uh, this collaboration. This collaboration started quite uh, accidentally, um, if I could say this uh, word, because uh, we uh, started uh, this collaboration with uh, the communication that we have started with uh, Dr. Brian Strom. Uh, who is the inaugural chancellor of uh, biomedical and health sciences at uh, Radgers University. Uh, we invited him uh, three times in uh, our national symposium of pharmacoepidemiology. Uh, pharmacoepidemiology by that time, it wasn't that uh, well known in Greece, at least. Uh, we were almost uh, the only uh, research group working on uh, pharmacoepidemiology, so it was uh, quite uh, honorable to have uh, the um, most extinguished uh, uh, researcher on uh, pharmacoepidemiology in our national symposiums. And uh, that's why in, uh, the fourth, on the 4th of October in uh, 2018, uh, he was awarded an honorary doctorate uh, of the Department of Medicine uh, of Democritus University of Thrace uh, for his um, uh, invaluable help that uh, gave us um, on uh, building our uh, pharmacoepidemiology research and with giving uh, lectures to undergraduate and postgraduate students uh, also to um, help uh, PhD candidates with their research work on pharmacoepidemiology and we have started also uh, on research uh, on common research uh, collaborations. Furthermore, uh, Tobias Gerhardt, another uh, member of Rutgers University, has joined our um, uh, uh, symposium on pharmacoepidemiology and uh, he gave us lectures also in terms of uh, postgraduate courses. And also Matthew Mazzagonis, uh, who is uh, sharing with me this uh, presentation uh, from the School of uh, Communication and Information, uh, was also uh, invited and uh, participated in our postgraduate courses. So after this um, first uh, steps of uh, preliminary collaboration uh, between uh, our uh, Department of Medicine and uh, Rutgers University due to uh, Professor Brian Strom. 
Uh, we received an email from International Academic Partnership Program, uh, because, and I think that uh, this changed quite our life because um, we have started uh, working uh, together with uh, uh, Riva and uh, Matthew. Uh, both of them are uh, distinguished uh, researchers and uh, professors of uh, Rutgers University. And uh, we have started uh, building our collaboration. And now we are uh, almost ready to announce that um, in uh, March, this March, in uh, the 10th of March, probably, we'll have the first uh, meeting, our joint meeting on uh, drugs and uh, psychoactive compounds abuse. And uh, we'll discuss it, uh, this phenomenon from, with data from both Greece and the United States. And uh, we are also planning to have uh, another uh, meeting on uh, nutritional habits and attitudes uh, among Greece and the United States. And uh, we'll discuss um, any um, common or different uh, habits that we have in two countries. And we'll discuss also uh, Mediterranean diet and um, American diet and all these uh, things. Uh, so I would like to take uh, more to take more time from uh, my colleague uh, Matthew, who will continue uh, his uh, uh, presentations with uh, the rest of uh, our actions that we are planning in the coming uh, future. Good evening, everyone. It's a uh, wonderful being with you this evening. It's uh, IPP Greece continues to be inspiring. The all the plans that uh, we've heard uh, so far this evening. Um, we have um, all kinds of ideas coming to mind and things we could work on in the future. And we'd love to know what others uh, in the IAPP Greece Initiative are working on as well. Um, but I'm very pleased to be among you, uh, among you today, along with my colleague from uh, Democritus University, Professor Kodo Georgis. Uh, and I'm representing our larger Rutgers IAPB Greece team, um, which I co-lead with my Professor Riva Tagor decker our initiative um, as Rutgers joining IAPP Greece is the product of collaboration between the University Schools of Communication and Information and that of the School of Health Professions, um, but also Rutgers Global, which is the university's unit that facilitates and oversees all of the institution's global projects. The core uh, objective of this joint effort is to advance health communication research and education across the health professions, both in Greece and the US. And when we refer to the health professions, we're talking about, of course, medicine, uh, physician assisting in nursing, pharmacy, nutrition, and dietetics, uh, occupational therapy, et cetera. And we speak of health communication because it's a fairly new field in, uh, in parts of Europe, including Greece. We're referring to scientific research um, on and the practice of, among other things, uh, patient healthcare provider communication, interprofessional communication in healthcare, and attendant health outcomes. Um, designing and implementing uh, and evaluating multi-level health promotion campaigns, and of course, employing new communication information technologies to support individual community and population health. Thus, our initiative speaks to a larger set of issues that interest universities, governments, as well as nonprofit and private sector actors, including the future of work in general and specifically in, in the health sector. Within this framework, we have worked enthusiastically and to expand collaborations that Rutgers has in Greece. And we're excited to report on our collaboration with Democritus University and, and Kalaki School of Medicine with a research and educational program orientation. So we're building on ties created in the past as Christos described, but we're taking a, a bottom up approach, meaning that we're letting university stakeholders, including university faculty, our colleagues, administrators at various levels and, and graduate students help us set the goals while providing the organizational scaffolding to support this work. So we're starting with the convening of e-symposia, which we serve, which serve as a vehicle for one, introducing our collaboration to audiences across our institutions, because the wonderful thing about IAPP Greece is that it doesn't only facilitate the, the building of ties and links and collaborations across universities and countries, but surprisingly enough, even within universities. Um, but it's also these e-symposia are a vehicle for bringing experts from both countries uh, to the table uh, to discuss issues related to our, to, uh, to our initiative. 
um, and to also discuss salient to our so uh, issues that are salient to our societies right now. Um, so we're in this process now of developing this, uh, this first couple of, uh, of e-symposia. And in, in participating in these, we hope our participants will introduce themselves to each other, present some of their work to broader audiences. Uh, at the conclusion of the public portion of these events uh, is usually followed by in-depth conversations just by the by, for, for this for the participants from each university to help identify precisely where we want, where there are synergies worth exploiting and how we want to do that. And in this context, we have two events, as Chris just um, outlined or er, um, mentioned earlier, um, that we're working on for the coming weeks. One is on drug abuse in the USA uh, and Greece, and we're looking at underlying mechanisms, usage patterns, treatment, and policy. It strikes us in the, the past uh, several weeks. I mean, the opioid um, abuse crisis continues to plague many parts of the US, including New Jersey, where we are based. Uh, but also there's a, a overuse of psychoactive uh, drugs and other kinds of drugs in, in Greece. Uh, think a, a phenomenon has been exacerbated over the course of the economic crisis and of course, because of the, of the pandemic. Um, at the, the second kind of event that we're focusing on is on the, the Mediterranean diet, something that Greece has immense strength in and is a example that many around the world um, uh, are trying to learn from, and that many uh, of our colleagues and students are interested in, and we're hoping that is also going to be a wonderful event later in the spring. We're expecting that these initiatives are going to lead to additional joint activities, uh, opening the path to faculty and student exchange programs, uh, summer schools, and also uh, even a, a post postgraduate programs, either certificates um, or, uh, or larger uh, programs, and we're going to try to, in, in doing this, to take advantage of this, of the, a new trend, not a used trend in a positive way in this case, uh, of the development of micro, of programs that lead to micro-credentialing, a term that is used more broadly in, um, in uh, the EU, uh, or badging, which is something that we use more commonly in the US these days. Thinking to the future, we hopefully post pandemic, we encourage our IAPP Greece leaders to continue to foster these partnerships produced by program participants. And we have just two recommendations perhaps to consider. One is maybe to establish a council of partner institutions to help raise awareness around the barriers that institutions identify in advancing their plans, share some of the wonderful initiatives that develop between partners uh, on both sides of the, of the Atlantic, uh, and to share information about new tools and mechanisms developed to help support uh, these collaborations. Uh, the second is maybe to complement these individual university efforts is to leverage the organizational infrastructure of IAP Greece sponsors and the social capital efforts, um, which include a variety of foundations to create an endowment that will provide additional funding for, uh, for competitive grants to partnering institutions in IAP Greece related initiatives. There's a few different examples of this is how I'm, I'm pointing, for example, to the uh, Israeli US Binational Science Foundation. That may be an interesting model to look at as something that could happen uh, and support Greek and US university partnerships. That said, thank you for your time. Um, we're looking forward to uh, hearing more from our, our, our partners and we're looking forward to seeing you maybe one of our events in the coming spring and beyond. Thank you very much. It was very interesting to uh, hear. And I guess much more interesting for the students which will participate in uh, this. We'll now move on to the third and final session, Networks of Greek Academics in the USA. First speaker is Mr. Petros, Petros Kumutsakos, Professor Kumutsakos, the president of the Atlantic Institute of Advanced uh, Studies, who I may say has done some remarkable stuff in his uh, uh, life and uh, went through this whole CV. Some of the, this stuff, I didn't quite understand what it was about, like the Center for Turbulent Research at Stanford University, but <laughs> I'm sure uh, everyone else understands better. Mr. Kumutsakos, Professor Kumutsakos, thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, kind introduction. Is it possible for me to share my screen? Uh, 
Yes, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, greet everybody, dear ministers, um, um, dear uh, Ambassador Payat, um, uh, dear colleagues, dear friends. Uh, I have the pleasure to um, introduce you with a few words, the Hellenic East of Advanced Studies. Um, the Hellenic East of Advanced Studies is based on scientific knowledge to serve humankind. And it has a particular emphasis on building and promoting international collaborations and exchanges between uh, Greek, American, and Greek diaspora scientists and academics and policymakers. Um, we have a particular emphasis in areas of science and technology, and we care about things like energy, security, health, and sustainability. Uh, as we address these problems, we believe there's great synergies between um, Greeks, US scientists, and Greeks of the diaspora. And we also wish very much to engage and promote uh, scientific and academic mentoring for young scientists in Greece and the US. Uh, this project has brought together people from Greece, like uh, Rector Boudouvis, uh, that spoke to you a few minutes here, um, a few other colleagues from Greece, a few colleagues from uh, uh, the US. It's actually very rare that you see so many MIT and Harvard professors together, but it happens. And we are very proud to have in our membership, uh, it's actually about 150 people now, and this list includes uh, several members of the US National Academy of Engineering, National Academy of Sciences, National Academy of Medicine. Uh, we believe in excellence, and what we hope for is to harness all this excellence and to create bridges between the Hellenic diaspora and our colleagues and peers in Greece. Uh, why we created HIAS, uh, we believe that the Hellenic diaspora always has in, uh, we always have in our mind ways to contribute uh, to Greece. Uh, and uh, what is interesting is that we find that there is an increasingly welcoming environment in Greece to encourage such contributions. So. We very much appreciate that. And the other thing that facilitates our interactions is what happens to us right now. Uh, thanks to technology, we can have these long distance interactions where we can get together much easier than perhaps we would have gotten together a few years ago. Uh, what uh, highest uh, is trying to put together is trying to use the Hellenic diaspora as a resource um, for science and for Greece. I believe that among our members, we have world experts in science and engineering. We have advisors to international, national and famous or very um, big or different sizes in industrial organizations. So there's tremendous expertise. And we have many people that they have been educated in Greece and now they're in leading academic institutions uh, abroad. Um, an example uh, to, to show you what the Greek diaspora can achieve is that if we consider in Europe and we look at all the different projects that European, uh, that Greeks of the diaspora, Greeks of the diaspora in Europe in particular, we have collected data that shows that there is over 30 million of euros per year that are acquired by Greek scientists in Europe. And then one of the questions is, could it be possible that these people should not emigrate, but they find a way to have these funds and to work uh, in, in Greece? Uh, the mission that we have is uh, to build bridges based on science, again, between the diaspora and our peers in Greece. We have experience over the last year. We had a great experience working in the field of robotics. We collected scientists from the US. Some of the top scientists in robotics in the US happen to be Greek. Scientists from uh, Switzerland and excellent scientists from Greece. And they got together and created a robotics initiative where they outlined the landscape in Greece. And they thought, what should we do as next steps? They prepared the report. And for me, I observed this, and it was a great example that when Greeks get together and put their minds together, great things have, can happen. So we hope to build on this success and to build other scientific projects in other areas like energy, artificial intelligence, uh, medicine. There is a, a ton of things that one can do by creating these bridges. Uh, we would like to participate in studies of relevance to the Greek government and industry. We were in touch with the Greek government. Uh, um, Minister Dimas has been uh, a great resource in helping us to build these bridges. Um, and we appreciated 
to try to find what is the appropriate way that the diaspora can help Greece. It's one thing to want to help and another thing to find the actual way in which you can help. So we have appreciation. There seems to be some problem uh, with uh, uh, Professor Kumusakos until we see uh, if we can fix that. Yeah, I don't know if we can, we can move uh, forward with uh, Professor Alexandra Turutoglu. Uh, if she's uh, with us, uh, Assistant Professor of Neurology at Harvard Medical School and uh, President of the Hellenic Bioscientific Association uh, of the USA. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I work at Mass General Hospital. I'm assistant professor of neurology at Harvard Medical School, but today I'm wearing a different hat. I wanted to talk to you as a president of the Hellenic Bioscientific Association of the USA. It is such an honor and a pleasure to be talking uh, to you on the occasion of the celebration of the International Education Day. So let me first congratulate the Minister of Education and Religious Affairs the Deputy Minister for Development and Investment, the General Secretariat for Higher Education, the General Secretariat for Greeks Abroad and Public Diplomacy, the Ambassador of USA in Greece, the Ambassador of Greece in USA, and the Executive Officer of the International Age of Education. I've been listening to all speakers, all distinguished speakers today, and I'm really excited to learn about the great initiatives that breeds Greece uh, and USA um, in such a way. My goal today is to share with you my thoughts about how HBA can help with specific research and um, educational collaborations. Like many academics in the diaspora, uh, we've gotten here uh, thanks to Greek um, mentors and the Greek educational system and the great culture we have. So we want to give back to our community and support it. And SBA USA does that in so many ways. Our mission is to enable and facilitate interactions among Greek biomedical scientists between USA and Greece. And although it started as a local community in Boston 15 years ago, it now numbers over 500 members across different states uh, in the US as well as in Greece. Ultimately, our key objectives are to enhance networking and communication among Greek bioscientists based in the USA and Greece to facilitate the dissemination of information and ideas on scientific and professional topics and to distribute information on grants, scholarships, and employment opportunities in academia. Of course, to promote the collaboration between SBA USA members and other association. And we're engaged in a variety of activities uh, towards these goals and various events of ours are being held with the support of the General Secretariat for Greeks Abroad and Public Diplomacy. And I wanted to particularly acknowledge Mr. Fisulaki for uh, his support. We believe the first steps towards strengthening the connections uh, within HBA is through connecting professors from U US uh, institutions with their colleagues in Greece. I was privileged to participate in the Greek uh, Diaspora Fellowship Program um, implemented by the International Institute of Education with the support of Stavros Narcos and the Fulbright Foundation in Greece. And I have been collaborating with uh, our Southern University of Thessaloniki, so I know firsthand uh, the positive outcomes that can come when Greek universities collaborate with American universities. At HBA, we recently started a new partnership uh, with the University of Crete, where we are bringing Grand Rounds to Greece. Grand Rounds um, is an essential element of medical education in North America going back decades. So we just launched a series of lectures with distinguished medical doctors from the US, which is open to all colleagues in Greece. Along these lines, we organize seminars to help medical students who want to pursue residency uh, in the US. The ultimate recipient of our programs are the students and early career scientists. 
We support students to come to the US to get training and develop new uh, skills and then come back to Greece. And one way we do that is through our travel scholarship programs that allows promising uh, Greek students and young scientists to come in the US. Likewise, uh, we have the exchange student exchange program that allows Greek medical students to travel to the US and vice versa, medical students from the States to travel to Greece. This is um, a program established by Professor Zanis and I believe this really helps to cement a continuing relationship between Greek and US uh, medical uh, schools. But we don't want to leave them alone. So that's when the, where the, our mentoring program comes in, uh, where we reach out to accomplish Greek academics in the States and connect them with younger people starting their career. We really value the importance of education. And I would like to uh, thank you all for inviting us uh, to talk today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this. And we're, we're very jealous of your library as well. <laughs> and I don't know if uh, Mr. Levizatos has... Uh, uh, we can hear you now. Can you hear us? Mr. Kumutakos, I'm sorry. I said Mr. Levizatos. Yeah, Mr. Kumutakos. I, I, I apologize for, um, for the mishap. Everything's great at Harvard, except, except the wireless sometimes. <laughs> so the others can confirm, I hope. I didn't have much to say. I just wanted to say again that uh, uh, we believe that scientific excellence and synergy are national resources. And again, the purpose of HIAS is to draw on the strength of the entire Greek scientific community. And um, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, present today. Thank you very much again. And... Uh... Uh, for your patience. Uh, now, before the curtain closes, uh, last one is Mr. Apostolos uh, Dimitropoulos for closing remarks, the Secretary General for Higher Education, which we uh, thank uh, once more with uh, Mr. Frisoulakis uh, for uh, their kind virtual hospitality today. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have exceeded our time, so I will be really brief. I would like to begin by thanking my colleague, the Secretary General for Public Diplomacy at Greeks Abroad, Mr. Yanis Chrysoulakis, for uh, our extremely coordinated and creative work. Uh, I hope that we will continue on the same path and develop similar activities in uh, the near future. I would also like to thank, in particular, the moderator of our webinar, uh, Mr. Kostas Papaglimintos, for his valuable contribution and his warm interest in our work. His presence was uh, really crucial for the success of our uh, today's meeting. Um, I believe that our meeting today showed that the bridges that unite Greece and uh, the USA have strong foundations, and it is our responsibility to strengthen them with modern materials and uh, further expand them. We thank from the bottom of our heart, hearts, I personally thank you for uh, uh, the bottom of my heart, uh, all the speakers from different parts of the USA who had the kindness to devote their time and share with us their thoughts and proposals. Uh, we heard many and extremely interesting proposals. Any proposals you wish to send us in writing uh, will be welcome and really appreciated. Uh, the cooperation projects presented uh, are a useful guide for all of us. Time limitations didn't allow us to present even more examples of Greek and USA cooperation. Therefore, uh, we'll plan to organize additional presentations on the topic uh, in the near future. Dear participants, we have a national strategy, motivation, and determination to turn out our universities into modern, dynamic, and inclusive international centers. In addition to all that, we have the tools we need, funding, methodology, the information platform, and there is more to come in the near future. Thank you again for your kind attention. Thank you. Good one. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Σας ευχαριστούμε. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ. Κύριε Βαχλιμίτσο, σας ευχαριστούμε πολύ. Σας ευχαριστούμε όλους. Thank you so much. Και τους συνεργάτες και τους συνεργάτες μας και τους συνεργάτες του κυρίου Δημητρόπουλου, την εξαίρετη Φένια, η οποία κάνει καταπληκτική δουλειά και είναι πάντα κοντά μας.
και τους φίλους τους οποίους είχα τη χαρά να ξαναδώ σήμερα, την Αλεξάνδρα Ιντουρούτογλου, την κυρία Διγιδίκη που είχαμε καιρό να τα πούμε και πάρα πολλούς άλλους συγχαρητήρια και σας ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ για την παρουσία σας. Thank you for your participation. And thank you for your coordination, Costa. It was excellent. Να είστε καλά. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ. Thank you for Thank you. 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 Ευχαριστούμε για όλα. Καλή συνέχεια. Τον κύριο Μιχαλακέλη, ξέχασα το, το, τη ε, ψυχή. Βέβαια, το στάδιο Τον ευχαριστώ πολύ συχνά και έτσι είμαι συνηθισμένο. Μπράβο. Οπότε. Πάμε για το Άρα. επόμενο. Με υπερβολικό επόμενο. Ναι. Έχουμε. Έχουμε. Απλώ θα λε ευχαριστώ πολύ. Καλώ ήρθατε. Για άλλη μια φορά.